Hey everybody, it's Alex here from iDesign Solutions. Really excited to talk today about the VEX Vision Sensor. It's both V5 and IQ compatible. It's the first sensor that is cross compatible like that. And I really think it's amazing. I think every uh, man, woman, and child involved in VEX should have a vision sensor and should be using one. I see a lot of them in the V5 scene and the EDR scene, but I don't see it as much in the IQ programming skills. And I think it's a really valuable tool. So today I'm gonna to show you how to just to set up a simple object follow and search program with the vision sensor. So we're going to track a certain color object and follow it around the field as it moves. Um, I'm going to be using the IQ with this, the VEX code IQ blocks, but this is definitely transferable to the V5 blocks and it should look just the same. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm here at my blank VEX code IQ blocks canvas. Now the first thing we want to do is add our devices and configure our robot. The only thing we really need to get this program up and running is a drivetrain and a vision sensor to sense the objects. So let's start by adding our drivetrain. I'm using the sample autopilot configuration. So it's just going to be a two motor drivetrain with the left motor on port one and the right motor on port six. I'm not going to worry about the gyro for now. Um, there is one on the robot, but I won't include that for now. So just very simple drivetrain, two motors. Let's hit done. So now we have our drivetrain commands, and the next thing we want to do is add and configure our vision sensor. So I put the vision sensor on port number two. So let's go ahead and add that as a device. Vision on port two. And now the vision configuration is a separate screen that does require us to go ahead and click this configure option. It's going to bring up this separate vision utility, and we need to go ahead and now plug in our vision sensor through the micro USB directly to our computer. This is only needed to do just to configure the color signatures and do the initial um, setup. Once you have your robot configured and your vision sensor configured, you should be good to go as long as you're not going into any new environments with a different lighting. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a second. So let's go ahead and plug in our vision sensor now. Okay, so now that our vision sensor is turned on, we see our two objects in focus. Now we can go ahead and freeze this image and save those color signatures to our robot. So now let's go ahead and set up our first color signature. Click on signature one and we'll type in orange So now we click on the set icon. We want to drag over the area that we are considering this orange color signature. And then we want to hit set. Okay, so now that we have the orange ball signature saved, we can see a couple things. We see, for one, the objects width, height, x, and y values. And we also see that something in the background is also being registered as this orange color. One way to mitigate this and um, kind of hone in on the specific color hue is to use this slider. So as we slide to the left and right, we kind of increase what is considered that color. So by sliding it to the left, it really hones in on that specific orange color and will only pick up just that and not um, similar colors in the background. So we see as we slide the slider, less and less becomes considered orange as it kind of hones in on that specific color. So let's go ahead and establish the same color signature for our blue cube. Now we do the same thing. We click on the set next to the blue cube, drag across the area that we want to set as a blue cube. So now our blue cube is all set, and now it registers that this is an orange ball, this is a blue cube, and once again, we also get um, object readout information about the width, height, x, and y values. Now on the vision sensor, the x values range from 0 on the far left to 315 on the far right side. And the Y values range from 0 at the bottom to 211 at the top. These are the specific pixel readouts of the vision sensor, and it's useful to know this when you're coding it. Um, it's going to matter where the objects are centered and where the object's height is as well. All right, so now that we've got our vision sensor configured and our drivetrain set up, we have everything we need to start doing our program. Now, the very first thing we want to do is make sure that this program is consistently checking to see if that orange ball is in its field of view. So how do we get this program to run forever with a forever loop under the control category? So let's drag out this orange control forever loop. 
Now everything we put in here is going to be continuously running. So we want it to constantly be checking to see if it sees this orange ball. And the first key to any vision sensor program is taking a snapshot of the vision sensor's field of view. It's called a snapshot in the program and that's basically just taking a quick image and determining whether um, a specific color signature is detected. So for this case, we're gonna be using the orange ball signature. So it's taking a snapshot and determining whether the orange ball is there. But there's a couple more steps we have to do. So let's have it make some decisions. The very first decision is going to be a simple if or else. Basically, if it sees the ball, we want it to try to find it and go after it. And if it doesn't, we want it to uh, turn slowly and um, maybe at a slow velocity of about 25% or something. We want it just to spin in a circle and look for it. So let's find our conditional if the object exists. So this is going to be our first decision. If the orange ball is found, what do we want it to do? But if we don't find the object, we want it just to turn right at a very slow pace to search for that ball um, consistently. So it's going to constantly be searching for that ball, just turning to the right, unless it sees it, unless the object exists. But what if it does exist? What do we want to do then? Well, then we want to make some more decisions. So our very first is going to be an if statement. And what do we don't want to do with our first if statement? We want to find something to compare it to. So under the vision sensor objects, we can take out the objects um, width. We can find the objects center. We're going to use the center of the x value to determine whether we need to turn left or right. But it doesn't quite fit in this um, hexagonal block space. So we need a, um, something that's going to be true or false. We need a Boolean statement as referred to. So now we can compare this center of our object to whether it's greater than 100, meaning it's towards the right side of the screen. We want to turn our robot right to counteract for that and get it back towards the center. So if the object center is over 100, it's going to turn right. And now we want another if statement. So if the object center x does not satisfy that parameter, if it's not greater than 100, well, is it less than 60, meaning is it on the left side of the vision sensor? So we want to do the same thing. Objects, center x, the center of the x value, is it going to be less than 60, meaning it's on the left side, so we need to turn left to counteract for that. So now we have our first two decisions underneath if the object exists. So if it finds the orange ball, it's either going to turn right or left, depending on how offset the center is. So now let's think about next what we want to do. What if the object is in the center? What do we want to do then? So we want one more if statement stating two conditions this time. So we do uh, one condition and another condition that both need to be satisfied for this to be true. So we're essentially going to do the inverse of these two. And if you right click on this conditional, you can actually duplicate just that block. And so this makes it a little easier because you can just copy and paste the same commands we were using before, but we just want to do the opposite. So instead of the center being less than 60 or greater than 100, we want to make sure the center is greater than 60 and less than 100, meaning it's roughly in the center of our field of view. So if this condition is satisfied, this will be the last condition we're looking for, then we want to either say, is this object close enough to us to where, to the robot, to where we can stop? Or do we want our robot to drive forward because the distance is still too great? So this is one last if or else statement. So it's if the object's close, or if the object isn't close enough, drive forward. And if it's not, we're close enough, we can stop. So we need one more comparison. And this time, we're going to use the object's width. So by comparing its width in the terms of our vision sensor's frame of view, we're basically saying it's taking up this much of our field of view, meaning it's that close to the vision sensor. So this is kind of how you can use it as a somewhat of a distance feedback, because you're saying how much um, this object's taking up space. So it's taking about 125 pixels of your field of view, meaning it's quite close. But you can tweak this if you wanted it to be closer or farther. So if it is underneath that field of view, you want it to drive forward. And if it's not, then we're okay. We want to stop driving. All right, so now we have our finished program. We're ready to go ahead, plug in our robot, and download this to the brain.
let's test it out. So for this IQ demonstration, I'm attaching the vision sensor just to the front of the autopilot drivetrain. I followed the instructions from the basic STEM lab that covers the vision sensor and getting started. And the only thing I did add was just these little bumper mechanisms in the front, just to make sure that the robot isn't hitting anything um, and damaging the vision sensor. So let's get started. So now our robot's gonna turn to the right and then it's just gonna keep following that ball until it's close enough, right in the center and takes up enough of its field of vision. So hopefully this was a great idea of how you can get started with the Vex IQ vision sensor and tracking a simple object. Feel free to ask us any questions or comments you might have about this and definitely check out our website for our upcoming events and webinars to learn more about Vex IQ and everything Vex. Have a great day.